Hello, everybody. Welcome to another one of our Sonic Lab presentations. Uh, we're here with Matt Collins from Crotus Audio, who's going to show us the uh, Concept2 synthesizer, which is just out, isn't it, Matt? I mean, it's, a, it's sort of a, an updated version of the original. The original actually won, I think we did, gave it best software way back in the last NAM we attended. Yeah. <laughs> It, yeah, it would have been. That was the last time we saw each other. And uh, yeah, I mean, it feels like a lifetime ago um, that the original concept came out and uh, we were allowed to meet in person. Doesn't it just? It's astonishing how time flies. So, Matt, what's been happening? I mean, there's some new features, aren't there? Yeah, so yeah, there's, uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of new stuff in here in Concept2. So I think one of the first things that uh, users of the original concept uh, will notice is the, the, uh, the look. So original concept uh, shipped with light mode. Um, we've now set to dark mode as default as when we were integrating this we, we found ourselves that we really preferred it so it's a different look straight off the bat um, one of the biggest changes you see in concept 2 is the presence of a new oscillator type um, which is a granular oscillator of which you can add your own sounds and includes tons and tons of sounds straight off the bat to get you started with it's a really fantastic resource for really uh, redefining the types of the range of sounds that concept is really capable of doing there's a lot um, of new presets added, here, aren't there? Sorry, there are a lot of new presets. A ton, to interrupt. Yeah, there's a ton of ton of new presets, and and the the whole synth is capable of doing so much more sonically that you know um, we just love the sound and uh, the users that we have already uh, really love the sound it's capable of. One of the things that people really loved in the original was the convolution reverb we've got over here. Um, that's been supercharged, op super optimized, and fleshed out with again a ton of factory. Um, uh, factory impulses and the ability to quickly add and grab your own user ones which is a really handy thing when building your own presets as well um, on top of that we added uh, we added a bunch of extra filters as well recently and uh, and one of the new things in concept 2 is the advanced shape modulator which is a really cool um, custom LFO control which is also capable of going forwards and backwards and working as an envelope as well so it's much more than just uh, a uh, simple advanced envelope. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole ton of stuff. I mean, the thing I think the thing is, is what I recall from the initial release also was this kind of concept of the ease of use. You know, the, it's it's the idea is it's to right, make yeah. it kind of easy to use. But before we get to, because it's it's very easy with these things to get carried away and just talk through it. Have you got like a, just a couple of patches to kind of go? This is what it can sound like, just so we can get a bit of a vibe of what's going on there. Definitely, yeah. So this is just the the default preset right now. really rich really epic uh, sort of lead type of sound um, switching on to the next one we've just got a nice rich 80s pad nice and classic a really handy thing to reach for um, we've got some nice sort of squelch sheet out his acidy bases there's definitely I mean I'm I, even not because I'm, I'm just listening on buds but these are not particularly bass heavy but I can hear that there's a decent amount of thunder in there which is and and i've been playing around with this a little bit myself as well yeah it's it's a really rich really good stuff for low end as well um we, other stuff that we didn't have in concept two before well now we've got access to stuff like this classic analog, much strings. Lusher analog yeah yeah yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, so that's really leveraging the, the power you get from the uh, granular oscillator here that you can see is, is modulating away as well. Um, but some of the really fantastic stuff, which is which is all new in Concept2, which is which you couldn't get anywhere near, um, is some of this really unusual, really rich, intricate sound design -y type of sounds like this one. That looks like a pair, a pair of granular oscillators by the looks of it. Is that is that about right? That's right, yeah. And uh, exploring some other presets just quickly using the granular oscillator. This is another really one that I love, really cinematic feel. Good Lord, I had to look around there to see if my speakers were still on because I'm sure I felt that <laughs> in a way that I shouldn't have done through my buds. But uh, <laughs> well, this this one this one may do the same. Some very very spooky stuff. Um, really inspired by like some of the stuff our users were doing in sound design and film. Um, so we really wanted to 
give something back to those users, but also like open up uh, a lot of the access type sounds to people who may be really new to synthesis or just want to get started with something straight away. It's another nice one here. So just quickly blasting through like a, a pretty broad range of stuff that you can get from this synth, um, which really defines the concept of concept um, <laughs> by not only making it really easy to use and really friendly, but even more powerful and even better sounding. And at the, at the, when you first look at it, there's a sort of sense almost like a, a oscilloscope. You know, this this very the central display is kind of key to the way that the whole thing operates, right? It's right, yeah. I mean, it's 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 quite an unusual layout, really. I mean, something that that we always wanted to do with concept is make synths a little less intimidating, especially for those people starting out. Um, there's loads of great synths out there that you know have tons and tons of tabs and racks and controls and matrices and knobs all over the place, and there's nothing wrong with that, of course. But um, we really wanted to come at it from a different angle. And the the main thing about this central section is that you got these different color coded sections and you can see those reflected in the UI just at a glance and the great thing about that is that when you're dragging and dropping parameters to modulate them to really give life to this subtractive synth you can use that uh, color coding to very quickly track what's going on um, and the only thing that is tabbed or hidden from you are just these tabs of controls in the granular oscillator unfortunately we couldn't really work our way around that and then the insides of the modulators themselves otherwise everything is always available to you at any time so the thing i really love about it is even if um, we get presets back from designers um, i can really quickly see what's going on and understand it um, which as a user is a really powerful thing because I think we've all been there where we've opened up a patch and you know hit a button and out comes this cas cascade of sound and it's very difficult to understand what's going on sometimes and then difficult then to personalize it. So I think that's one of the real strengths of concept is the ability to really un quickly understand what's going on, learn what's going on and then personalize that to your taste. And so working with the granular, can you just drag and drop files into that or do they have to be in a specific, specific format? No, you can just drag whatever you like into it so I mean you don't have to clear it but like if I just grab anything from live here you get this little outline and it, and it goes you can do the same from finder or explorer in windows it's just drag and drop which is really fast really quick and easy um, another great thing with the drag and drop stuff look if I actually just take that same file I can actually drag and drop it into the convolution reverb so now we start to get, open up some really interesting sound design possibilities for just creating sounds something really unusual um, Great example, actually, of that was one of those presets I showed just a second ago. So I'm actually just going to hop back to that. Um, so this one, Boeing Metal. So if I turn off the reverb, you'll hear that this has a very, very different sound. So it's got this kind of acidy and sampled analog thing going on in the one, one granular oscillator and another kind of classic Moog style one going on here. But that kind of rich, metallic, unusual texture is all gone. So where that's coming from is the convolution reverb. And what's happening is we've actually got a bowed guitar that's been used as the impulse in the convolution reverb. So it's giving you that metallic, bowed type of sound and that sort of analog sound from the granular, from the granular oscillators. So just by putting in a different impulse to this, we're going to totally transform what this sounds like. So... If I drag in and put in, that's a, a, a soprano, some choir. What's this like now? Well, there we go. Very different. It's totally transformed and even just backing up on the mix of it. It's almost another oscillator, isn't it, in a way? That's very interesting. Yeah, it's a fantastic resource just in so many ways. So not only as a reverb itself, um, but, it almost, yeah, it's almost, it's almost like vocoding, it. isn't it? It kind of because it. I, I dropped a couple of drum loops in there, and I was getting this kind of really interesting rhythmic kind of stuff. It's it's quite an interesting way of uh, of affecting the sound. For sure, yeah. I mean, another great one I like to do is some of these impulses here are actually like rhythmical impulses. So you, you'll get this kind of feel from it. And what we've seen is that people just love to experiment with that. Um, this you can drag and drop the actual routing of everything around really easily now as well. So the ability to just experiment and have fun within this space that you can clearly understand what's going on is really amplified. Um, and that's a really, really powerful thing. 
Um, so if I drag another one in, this is actually a, a chord uh, from a cymbal on. There you go. I mean, just, just changing that, changing the routing has completely changed that sound. I'm starting to get something very unusual yeah. really, really quickly and easily. And, you know, if I then just start to just flick through some of the other... Um, uh, some of the other sounds we've got coming out of the um, granular oscillator. We're going to get something really unusual. Quite quickly, and that's... It's fun, yeah. and what I find myself doing in this is just once once I've been playing around for a few seconds like I've just done, then I want to explore a little further, and the, the, the system we've got in the center is, is fantastic for that. Well, one thing I found um, when I was playing around with just the presets, because I've done a Friday Fun Jam, which may or not be out, yeah, be out be before this, I think, um, is just the, the there's there's a drive uh, effect in there, and it's got so many different saturation or saturation, I think it is, and it's got some fantastic uh, um, algorithms in there. Oh yeah, this thing's gnarly. Um, there's a there's a great preset here somewhere. I'm just going to try and track it down quickly. Uh, this one, destroy me. This is just nuts. <laughs> And that's really so. That's leveraging like multiple drive stages that you can get out of this thing. So not only in that saturation module that you mentioned there. So we've got some like diodic stuff, some tape stuff, but also then you've got drives on the filters, um, and you can stack filters here as well. So we actually got a, we've only got a um, you can't run filters in parallel uh, through the actual filter section, but you can do it through the effects section. So now we've got another 24 dB filter here with another drive on it, and you've got all these really interesting gain stages going on here. Um, which then can then also be modulated and messed around with, which is really really fun. Yeah, and that, and I think the key to this also is the ability to the to drag and drop modulation sources. You can just go, yeah, I want something to do that, and that's that's that brings the sort of center section into play as the kind of hub for all of that stuff, right? Definitely, yeah. I mean, that's very much the way I like to think about it is as is, is as a hub. Um, so, I mean, look, I tell you what, why don't we just build something up from scratch and see, you know, where it takes us, really? So, so yeah, very up, very straightforward sound to start with. Um, let's start leveraging up this modulation section in the center. Look, so first thing I really like to do in the synth is actually use. I like to try. I like to use the granular oscillators, kind of like a sort of pseudo wavetable thing, actually. Mm. Um, so if I turn this top one off, we're just hearing this sampled Moog style um, sound. So. So obviously you can hear that evolve over time. So if I turn up the grain size, and we can see that being indicated here now, I'm just going to sling that over into that LFO. Now I'm going to slow that right down, and you will see that then graphically displayed as well. And, you know, more like a wavetable now, something is evolving over time. And of course we could chuck this into a different... Um, a different envelope, a different, sorry, uh, modulator, sorry. And that could be then controlled from an envelope, like you would typically with a wavetable. Um, and we can see that I've, that's quickly changed from green to red. If I drag it back, it's going to go back to red. So not only can we easily see what the LFO is doing, um, but then also the red parameters it's affecting. And, you know, if you, it's just a fun thing to start experimenting with just dragging these things over. Um, so flipping over to the variation tab is quite a fun one as well because you see that you've got six variation controls and these directly align to the ones in that first tab. So for instance, jitter, you might think what the hell does jitter mean? Um, basically it just means variation of the corresponding one here. So we've got so gain, variation and gain, basically it's all the jitter is. You can see now that these grains as they're moving around are starting to be generated at different amplitudes. So just experimenting with that, you can get something really interesting. Right, so there's some modulation built into the, into the oscillators which don't require the mod matrix already. So, yeah, interesting. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because you want to, make, want to make that super easy to do. But then, of course, if you want to modulate those modulators and those variation controls, you can do that really easily as well. Just drag and drop them in. So, cool. Okay, we've got that going. I'm actually going to turn on the second granular oscillator now. And let's choose a different type of sound. So I'm just going to go to some of the factory stuff. So what we got. So there's a really wide range of sounds. Obviously, you can see there's a ton of analog stuff. Sample from, sample from various analog synths. Um, I mean, I really like these big saws. 
They're really cool. Nice and really nice and meaty. If you want to do something a little more experimental, a little more unusual, though, you can go to the instruments, um, to the experimental section. You've even got, like, animals and stuff in here, which can be quite interesting. Um, ambiences. You can actually use this to make ambiences for backgrounds and stuff, vocals, all sorts of tons of stuff. Uh, I'm actually going to jump down to some of the distorted ones. Though. Let's see what epic fail three is. Yeah, that's not quite what I'm looking for, but let's just... It, it, it's just easy to experiment until you find something. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. Okay, cool. Let's stick with that. So, again, just use of the little arrows, flicking through these menus is really cool to just say, okay, it's not quite what I want, just give me something else. So, let's use the same technique of moving through this nice and slowly. Mm, that's nice. Okay, nice. We've got, we've got a nice evolving sound. And we just use a single granular oscillator this time. Right, cool. So let's move over to the filter. Uh, let's stick with our standard 20 dB, 24 dB filter. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use one of these really nice Concept2 features called XY Capture. Now, this was in the original as well, but some of you may not have really seen it yet. So I'm going to drag the cutoff and the resonance into my little XY pad. So you can see as I'm starting to move this yeah. around. Okay, nice. Okay, we all know what we kind of know what that's going to sound like, right? Nice. So the nice thing about this is that I can then capture that movement. And as soon as I let it go, it's going to play ah, it. Ah, so you create away. a modulation path. I should point out at this point, um, if you're seeing a sort of laggy screen, it's not because it's laggy. It's because this is coming down Zoom and your MacBook is working really, really hard to bring you this. So uh, <laughs> it's not like this in real life, folks. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, Okay, so quickly what I did there is like I'm starting to explore that modulation source a little bit more. So I've set the playback direction to be bi bi-directional now. So we're just using that as a kind of gesture. And is that and then trigger, what, is that trigger per note or just trigger eight on every note? If you see what I mean, is it is it polyphonic? Uh, that will be applying to every, everything that's coming through the filter or anything that's going to anything green basically. Okay. Uh, and quickly, what I did there as well is that the the speed of the re, of the you know reading back that modulation source, I've then choose chosen to modulate as well. So I can just pick that up and drag it and to anything else in the center tab. And now we're oh, modulating right. a modulator. Right. Uh, okay. We could even. You know, let's all right, okay, just to go even further, and I can just drag the frequency of the LFO into another one, and now you can see we've got quite an unusual shape being modulated by another modulator. Right. Moving into the effects section, let's add something. Let's add, add just a nice thick flanger to it. Okay, now let's say that we're going to modulate something, modulate something in this flanger with what with. Uh, something else. So we've got another LFO here. I'm going to switch this to the advanced shape. This is one of our new things. So easy to adjust oh, this into a custom nice. LFO. Yep. So, and again, <laughs> that can also be bi-directional. So you start to get these quite wacky shapes. We've got a little bat here. Um, that's nice and that's sick. That's come really quickly. Um, I can then sing that to tempo. If I decide that I now want the cutoff to be modulated with that, just drag and drop it in, and now see it's changed from green to blue. So at a glance, I can just see what's going on, which is great, because you know this isn't going to amuse me if I come back to it at a later date. I'm going to get it. If I, if I want to share it with someone else, they're going to get it. Um, Ali in the reverb there to add a little bit, a bit of depth. Um, if I change one of these other ones now. So this is one of these rhythmic impulses I was talking about. So not only is it reverbing, but it's also rhythmic. So it's quite an unusual sound that we've managed to pick out really quickly and really easily. And, you know, we've gone from, you know, nothing to something quite unusual. Um, and we can continue exper to, to experiment really easily here by just adding in different things, experimenting with different oscillator shapes. Maybe we actually will add in the traditional oscillator on top of this now. And we've yeah, gone somewhere nice. pretty wild pretty quickly. But if, we, if I decide that, you know, it's just gone a bit too far, all I need to do is just start removing things and I can stop this again. And 
we've dialed, we haven't got lost, we haven't done, gone totally down the rabbit hole, you know, and we can, you can come back out of the rabbit hole if you do go down it, back to something really tangible really quickly because of the way that the workflow is set up, which is really, really handy. Um, we must, we can't, we, we can't uh, avoid the rather, rather, last pair, rather large pair of dice that are sitting there at the bottom of the screen <laughs> at this point as well. They seem to have some sort of relevance. This is, I believe this is a randomization kind of scenario, right? That's right, yeah. So uh, that's what we call the tweak it system. So uh, we prefer to call it that and not a randomization system because it's a little bit more personal than that. So if I open this up, you'll see that there's a bunch of controls that have been assigned to it. Okay, so you can see we've got these little uh, yellow sections around various controls. And what I'm going to do, this is a preset we heard earlier. I'm just going to hit the dice. So it's not too extreme. No, it's not too extreme at all. So that's the nice thing about this. So all the factory presets are set up in this way that if it's if you get to a point where you're like, yeah, okay, this sound is not really going anywhere, you can spam the dice a couple of times and it will get it will it will not take you somewhere completely wild. It will just evolve that sound, tweak it and adapt it. Um, which is really good because it stops you from just accidentally losing everything you had and going totally berserk. Um, when you're building up your own stuff as well, again, you can assign that as well. So just dragging and dropping a parameter in. So just this oscillate again now. I can set how far we're going to move when I hit the tweak it right. for each parameter I add to it, which is really, really handy because then if I, if I want to say... Yeah, I, I like I like generally where this resonance is, but you know, like a little bit of movement might be nice. Or I'm up for, you know the mix of a filter just you know being pretty much anywhere um that's a really really handy thing is there a limitation to the number of uh because there's a there's a finite size to that box will it scroll how far can you go yeah i i don't think there's any limit to the number of parameters you can add to it actually so again even on the the envelope where we go and you remember then so you can set those ranges per parameter so let's say on that you want that sustain to just stay within a good reason but you want the release to you know yeah. go pretty much anywhere and then you've got our master amount for everything in this list as well so let's say you set that and then you want to say right okay i want a bit of variation but i only want a kind of 21 percent chance of it within all these ranges individually you can do that as well so it's a really like really expressive really useful containable way of making variation I noticed also uh, down there we've got uh, the voices count. This one's one. I saw as many as 16. I mean, is there a finite amount of voices you can assign to a patch? I mean, what's the... I think it's... Um, it just goes up to 16. Yeah. Right, okay. Just up to 16. And in terms of and in terms of DSP footprint, I mean, I wasn't noticing anything kind of too hip, horrific with it, but I was running it in Reaper, which I couldn't find the way to <laughs> show me how to do that. How is it in terms of what's going on? I mean, I realise your machine is doing an awful lot of other stuff at the moment, so it's perhaps a little unfair. Yeah, it's 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 very reasonable, and that's actually something we worked on a lot um, for Concept2, particularly the reverb. I mean, uh, convolution reverb is, is always a little heavy. We did a lot of work on that, really stripping that back. Um, and you know you can you can potentially run a patch with three of those reverbs stacked on top of one another, and that's not really going to trouble your machine too much now. So we've done a lot of work on that. So there we go, just blasting out another one of those nice, really rich, cinematic, -y, abstract type of presets there as well. But I remember one of the things that you were you were really drawn to when we showed you this synth back in Nam was the uh, the audio input feature. Ah, yeah, that's right, because um, it'll it'll use that as a modulation source, right? That's right, yeah. So what I thought I'd do is um, walk everyone through what that is and how quick it is and how easy it is. So, um, okay, so I've just opened up this patch. So this is just called Evolving Pad. Um, I've got a little section, a little MIDI clip prepped already. Okay, so it's just going to go through this chord sequence. So, okay, cool, nice little patch. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this advanced shape mod and I'm going to switch it to an audio input modulator. Okay, so what does that mean exactly? Uh, what this means is this is basically going to do envelope following from anything else in your door, anything else in your host that you choose to send into it. So just to make this nice and expressive, I'm going to add the uh, cutter for the filter here as well to this same red uh, modulator. Cool, okay, right now I'm going to go to something I made earlier. And I've got this track just with a couple of um, layers of percussion. Let's play this. Okay, so all we need to do to start G 
gelling the whole track together now is go to sidechain and this this is really easy in live it's, it's perfectly easy in things like logic as well um, i'm just going to choose kick okay and now that's automatically being picked up here by the modulator and everything that's assigned to the red is now we can use we can use the uh, incoming audio from that kick to influence what's going on in the synth which is really cool because then it starts to become this really nice performable thing I'm guessing that could, that work. could that work on a live it. input as well? Could you have someone singing into that? Or would that be? Yeah, anything you want. You, you can also choose it. You can flip it to actually follow pitch as well. And you can see this little red indicator is it's going to be following the pitch of the kick, which is obviously not particularly useful. But yeah, if you're going to sing into it, feed another melody into it, you could use that as a way to dynamically shape um, your synth patches with what else is going on in the track, which is really cool and really. It's a really great way to just, again, find inspiration for what's already happening. So if I go down here and I switch the input to the snare, that's a bit more interesting, yeah. Yeah, and maybe now I can switch it to the cymbals. And it's as easy as that. Something else that you could do is I've also got a rim part here as well, which is a little bit more sparse. There we go, just turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. So what I've done as well is I've rooted that to another track and I'm sending that. I'm gonna send that to contact as well, and I can send that to a different side chain. So I can now have multiple parts of the track affecting different things. So if I choose audio input here and choose a second chart chain, what we should see now is we can use the green. Anything green will now use for the be hit by the rim. So basically the drive right now is going to be hit. Should be affected by that rim shot when it comes in. For the audio input, yeah, you can only have four. Um, we've, I think we've found that most doors struggle to actually support four, but some of them do. So that's as many as we've given. Okay, but you could... But yeah, great way of gelling the things Does it have to be via sidechain, or could you just take it from an active audio input? Uh, you need to use the sidechain of the of the synth, but yeah. It, right, it, okay. You can just use it. You can send whatever you want in it, as easy as that, from, from the host. Got you, um, got you. So yeah, super, super easy. Neat. Wow, that's yeah that's, uh, yeah, that's one of the things. And how fast will it track? I mean, can you actually get it to track pitch if you're putting something really, really low, almost turning it into LFO? I mean, what, what are the limitations? I mean, because obviously many of our friends will probably want to break it and figure out how far they could go with that, right? Definitely, I'm definitely one of those friends. Um, yeah, I mean, it will track as fast as it possibly can in terms of amplitude. In terms of pitch, yeah, I mean, you can see, I think we limited it to, to 4K on the top. Um, you can also do it from mini note as well, uh, but yeah, it will track, hertz, track your pitch on the bottom, right? Right down as well, yeah. And you and you can smooth those values out as well if they're leaping around, or sometimes, as you know, pitch tracking can be a little bit jumpy. Um, so we've added that smoothing value there as well, just to kind of tame it, and make it a bit more musical. Oh yeah, I'm hearing it now. It's, it's popping. Bit. It's popping. That's quite nice. It's popping the the chord out there. Yeah, actually, look. So if I if I set that back up again, and I even just turn it down. If it's if that's gonna go, yeah, there we go, right. So if that's gonna, is that gonna go in? Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, right. So now I've actually just turned it right down, turn the rim down. That's right, bugger that up already. There we go. Yeah, that's yeah. quite nice. So I'm now like we're just that. using yeah. that audio Me. as a modulation source. So, so there we go. So super quick way to experiment with yeah audio input modulation to your tracks um really cool way of 
if you're doing something really musical or just gelling the track together getting things to speak to one another so using the side chaining as you may be anyway but now using it as a modulation source for oscillator parameters filter parameters effects parameters anything that you can think of basically um and then again you've got the tweak it you can supercharge that as well if you just get you know a bit short on inspiration but wanting to still keep it tamed you can use that and yeah fantastic like source of just you know transforming whatever you've got by dragging and dropping sound in uh, especially in the reverb fantastic resource yeah nice one so this is available now i mean it's been out for a while um it's it, uh, it you know it's download it's download only i'm guessing uh, does it use iLock or anything like that or is it all sort of fairly straightforward uh, no iLock it's um it's our own um activation system for this one so yeah, you don't need spots. anything like that at all um totally free demo so everything i've shown today um including the use of all the samples is part of the free demo so you can have as much fun as you possibly like with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Matt, thank you so much for showing us. That's brilliant. Um, so uh, for those who need to find out more about it, I guess it's uh, just crotusaudio.com. Is that the uh, coordinates? We could stick them on the screen, obviously. To... Yes, that's those are the coordinates, yeah. yeah. So, Matt, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we'll hopefully see you in person at another show one sometime soon, eh? I really hope so, yeah. Thanks for having me.